I was asking around about the Asheville Running Collective. What do you think the most common refrain is when I ask around about How do they describe it? Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. I, I would imagine uh, only positive things, right? <laughs> Last September, I suffered a really traumatic pelvic injury, like I fractured my pelvis. So I was out for six months. <laughs> so this is my kind of like first distance run back. <laughs> so I'm pretty stoked about it. About just before mile seven on an old road bed we were running on, there was a mama bear that came around the corner, saw me, took up off the hill, and then two cubs followed her. Hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of Dispatch Radio. This is part one of a two-part Asheville, North Carolina bonanza. Boulder folks, have you heard of this place? Asheville, North Carolina. They call it the Boulder of the East. They've got trails as far as the eye can see. They've got kayaking. They've got breweries. They've got a mix of tech talent, lots of coffee shops, and a good mix of hippies as well. A good art scene. Sound like a place you know? Well, check out this episode and the one after it to get a deep dive on all Asheville has to offer for the running community out there. If you've been wondering where we've been the last couple of months, we have got some exciting news. We've been helping Alpinist Magazine get a new podcast launch. Encourage everybody to go to iTunes or Stitcher and check that out. Go to alpinist.com. First three episodes are out featuring Tommy Caldwell, Conrad Anker, and David Roberts, one of my personal heroes. The interviews are by Paula Wright, the associate editor over there. She's doing a great job. And I am back in Colorado having survived the hurricane in the southeast. It's good to be back. Last night we were at New Terrain Brewing recording a dispatch radio hour live with Elliot Couch and some local ultra runners. So be sure to check that episode out when it comes out. And with that, we'll jump into the show. Backcountry Colorado, hiking, backpacking. I did a lot of marathons. I was convinced to do some ultras. Climbing, and I do filming and photography. I just like the ultras because I love the community. I just think that everybody is so nice, whether they're the first place finishers or, you know, us that kind of mosey along. All right. Well, hello, Dispatch Radio Nation. I am sitting in Asheville, North Carolina, as a hurricane uh, heads our way. I'm sitting next to Aaron Saft in his store, Foot RX. Aaron, good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, an exciting time uh, to be in Asheville, not just because a hurricane is on the way, but uh, there's a lot going on in the uh, ultra running, uh, running scene here in Asheville. We've got our Asheville blowout show uh, actually shows combined uh, going on coming up here. And I want to take our listeners through what's coming up here. So, you know, first of all, we're just coming off the Blue Ridge Relay. It's one of the longest relay races in the country. Uh, about 200 teams competed uh, this year. It was the 13th running of it. And a new course record was set. Aaron, this is a race that you're familiar with. You had a ultra team out there. What is this thing? So it starts in Virginia and uh, you have... 6, 12, I've even heard of soloists doing it, but uh, usually with your relay, your leg takes turns going through in order, and if somebody goes down, you have to keep going in order, even with one man down, so somebody's going to have to pick up an extra leg. The relay makes its way all the way here on pretty much back roads. You hit the Blue Ridge Parkway a little bit, but you finish here in Asheville. So these runners covered uh, 208 miles. The Asheville Running Collective took the big W this year. You want to guess what their average pace was without uh, looking at my notes? Um, I would guess somewhere around 540. 535, oh. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so in a in a 12-man team rotating, uh, every 16 miles or so, these guys covered 208 miles and about 17,000 in elevation gain. They squeaked out the win against the Charlotte Running Club. This is the Battle Royale, I guess, on the, on the East Coast here. And so we sat down with Mark Driscoll. He's uh, one of the galvanizers for the Asheville uh, Running Collective. He uh, ran in the race, and so we'll have a full breakdown on what that entailed. A few other notable things from that race, horse records for the overall, uh, for the master, that was the Carolina Godiva Masters out of Cary, North Carolina. Uh, We had a course record for the Ultra Mixed, which was the Just Running Ultra Maggots, who were really kind of the, you know, were one of the original teams and really dominated until this running collective got together and started blowing these times out of the water. And Ann Wheatley, actually, who's going to be on the show uh, on uh, episode two 
of our Asheville blowout. Ann Wheatley was on that team, so congratulations to Ann and all those folks. And we also had a course record on the Mixed Master. And of note, the Foot RX Ultra Team uh, was the top ultra team. This means they had six people, so a lot fewer people running out there. Uh, and they actually placed fifth overall with a 649 average pace, which is just absolutely insane, wouldn't you say, Aaron? Indeed, yeah. Uh, So congrats to uh, all of the folks that ran that race. We'll be talking to Mark here in a second to hear more about it. And also a shout out to the team out of Dillon, Colorado, I noticed. Team Chaos. So uh, we mixed it up. We got Colorado in the mix at the Blue Ridge Relay. One of our girls was on that team as well. All right, cool. Right on. So, you know, that's part of what this Asheville uh, blowout episode is all about is uh, we're discovering all kinds of connections between Colorado and Asheville. Of course, we've got Josh Stevens, who we're going to be talking quite a bit uh, on kind of episode two here of our blowout show. But, you know, every time I visit Asheville, I'm discovering new kind of Colorado connections. So it's, you know, it's a lot of fun to be here and living in Colorado and the kind of mutual love and respect and, and maybe a little rivalry as well, would you say? Friendly, of course. Okay, keeping it friendly. After our talk with Mark, we'll bring you our coverage of the Rooster's Revenge 30K. It took place this weekend. I'm actually wearing my race t-shirt. So, Aaron, thank you for the race t-shirt. I was running low on laundry with this trip to Grandma. Uh, I think they came out great. It's a pretty sweet shirt. And uh, I actually have your socks on as well. So thank you. A really great goodie bag. This was a first year race uh, that you put on. Why is it called the Rooster's Revenge? (laughs) So uh, my dog and I went out running last year and the campsite where we actually start the race, there was a family camping there and there was a rooster. Whether it was theirs or not, they had a rooster at this campsite, which is, as you found out, in the middle of nowhere. So it was there for two weeks. The people left and the rooster was still there. And after two weeks, it just disappeared. So uh, the, the first day I did it, I ran the course that you ran yesterday. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want a sense of what fun is to a uh, Asheville, North Carolina ultra runner, two words, wet feet. That's right. Yeah, we had 10 river crossings and infinite creek crossings, so. Infi- yeah, infinite creek cross. Yeah, I counted about 13 what I would consider legit crossings where my foot was com- at least completely saturated. And one that went up to, I, sw- I, th- I swear one of them went up to my knee. <laughs> I, I would agree with that, yes. And so this was a uh, 30K course in Mills River Recreation Area. It's part of the Pisgah National Forest. Absolutely gorgeous. And also your backyard. Yes, I live five miles from where we started. You are one lucky boy after after running that race. Um, I mean, you just had, you know, tree canopy, you had waterfalls, you had river crossings, you had vistas, you had, you know, nice river. soft dirt trails. Yep, I had some azaleas and... Yeah, it's just a beautiful, you know, environment there. It's really, I am, I'm blessed. And uh, for the report uh, that's coming up on this show, uh, we talk with Kristen Wet Pants Olnick. We talk with Abby Harris. Uh, she's a Trail Sisters ambassador. Woot woot. Hello, Gina Lucrezzi out there. And, and Abby actually set Dispatch Radio history. Uh, she gave us our first ever during race interview. So thanks for that, Abby. Uh, we also talked to Tag Garman. He's the fastest granddad, or he was the fastest granddad out there on Sunday. Monday. Uh, we talked to John Mazurek. Uh, he's a mushroom hunter. He told me all about the, the awesome variety of mushrooms you can find on these trails. Uh, we talked to Lewis Kirchner and his Sugar Hill gang out of Georgia. These are two couples that came up for the race. Uh, and of course, we talked to the men's and women's winners. Uh, Dan Anthony, former collegiate runner out of Virginia Tech, hokey hokey high. Uh, and Sophie Beckham, who really got me through my race. Uh, you know, she was, her motor just kept going. And I, I, I said, you know, I can't stop and walk if Sophie is still motoring. So are you, are you familiar with Sophie? I just met Sophie yesterday, and she crushed it, so it was awesome. (laughs) So we'll have a full report on that. Coming up on episode two of our Asheville Spectacular, we've got a full sit-down with three folks that really make uh, this place special as far as the Asheville running community. Uh, Aaron, yourself, uh, Adam Hill, who we're now dubbing the uh, Josh Stevens of Asheville or vice versa. We're not sure. We haven't quite figured that one out. And Ann Wheatley, who's a, a local runner here and just, you know, crushes the trail and also is, you know, starting her own company uh, based in the running scene. In that show, we're going to be talking about uh, Aaron making it to the finals of the Runner's World cover competition. Could have been a cover model. (laughs) Yeah, it's probably good I wasn't. (laughs) 
<laughs> and uh, Aaron not dying in the Canadian death race, uh, perhaps, well, though perhaps he came close. He, uh, you encountered a grizzly bear, was that right? Yeah, a grizzly and two cubs. We talk about the sim- similarities of Adam and uh, now Boulder resident Josh Stevens. Hello, Josh, out there. We talk about the Pitchell, which we are now dubbing uh, the Barkley of the East. Uh, and Aaron, since we sat down, you actually did this beast. I did. July 4th, I completed it. Um, I mean... There, there is only one Barkley, but you know, it, this, uh, this pitchel challenge is definitely a, a gnarly beast that's uh, tough to get through. But I'm uh, happy to say I made it to from Pisca to Mitchell. So if you go on Strava right now and you look up Pitchell, you're one of the few names under 24 hours, which is the official kind of cutoff for this thing. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, on my July 4th data. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, congrats on that finish. And we also talk about Ann Wheatley's quest for the perfect run. That's a quest that started at the Rim to Rim Trail in the Grand Canyon with Ann running out of water with uh, over 16 miles and 102 degree heat. So that's uh, that's adventure for you, folks. Uh, so we have a ton coming at you. Strap in your seatbelt. Thanks for listening. And first, we're going to jump into our talk with Mark Driscoll. Mark Driscoll, well, uh, congratulations, friend. Cheers to you on a uh, record-breaking run. We're here to talk about the Blue Ridge uh, relay that just happened. For our dispatch radio audience, will you give us a breakdown of what this race is? Sure, the Blue Ridge Relay is a, it's about 208 miles. It's a 36-leg relay race from Grayson Highlands in Virginia, and it ends in downtown Asheville. Uh, so we ran on a 12-person team, and each runner does three runs throughout the night. So about a little under 20 hours total. And uh, people may not have heard of this run. It's, it's similar to one in Oregon, though. Is that right? Yeah, Hood to Coast is the one that a lot of people have heard of, as well as some of the Ragnar relays and and, uh, and such around the country. But this one's about 200 teams. I think Hood to Coast is over 1,000. All right, so uh, so what happens in this race? Uh, just kind of take us through the basics. It's, you got 12 people on a team. You've got 208 approximately miles to cover, uh, but there's like certain sections, like defined sections. Right, yeah, there's uh, each segment or leg of the relays, uh, I guess it's anywhere from two to around 10 miles and uh, broken up with a total mix of, uh, I guess, elevation profile throughout. So the one of the things that's unique about this one is it's really hilly. Um, I think I think I had said before, I think it's like uh, around 17,000 feet of climbing and 19,000 feet of descent. So there's some legs that might be all up, some are all down, and some have a mix. There's not not too much that's flat and um, pretty challenging throughout. We had a joke uh, on the run where you're driving the course while someone else is running. You're like, man, this leg is awful. And we said, on this relay... Every leg is awful, <laughs> it seems. So. And uh, all right, so 17,000 feet of climbing over 200 miles. Um, how many total miles did you do? I did about 18 or 18 and a half miles, yeah. And uh, what time did you get? How, how long did it take you? Yeah, sure. So we uh, both uh, our rivals, Charlotte, Charlotte Running Club, and uh, my team, the Asheville Running Collective, we both beat the previous course record, and we ran... Uh, Asheville Running Collective won, and we ran 19 hours and 12 minutes. So that it was around 5:35 per mile pace, and Charlotte was only a few minutes behind us. And this is where we do the uh, like the the record skip. And uh, did you say five minute and 35 second pace? Yes, that is true. Yeah, 5:35. The last record was around 5:40. So it was, you know, five seconds improvement over the course of that you know five seconds per mile sorry over the course actually adds up to quite a bit yeah so what so you guys are just a bunch of running freaks here that just like to run really fast Uh, we try yeah we try (laughs) uh well tell me about the uh the rivalry with charlotte yeah i mean the long and short of it is Asheville rules and charlotte is dumps and uh now i'm i'm kidding slightly but um it's probably been about five uh five or six years now we've got a great rivalry rivalry with charlotte and um it started at this relay where they had some teams that were competitive and we did too and it's really gotten more intense every year and i I was telling you before it's gone back and forth with the wins and crazy enough they beat us last year by only 10 seconds so we had a full year um 
with that taste in our mouth. And, uh, and then this year, the lead changed throughout, and we were able to come out on top by just a few minutes. So it's a crazy competitive rivalry. And this is a kind of a unique race in that you, the fast guys actually start in the back, so you kind of go through the field? Yeah, that's true. I th I'm not sure exactly when the first team starts. So there's about 200 teams, and they start early in the morning, and then um, the top two seeds, you know, based on the times we predict we're going to run, we started around 1.30 p.m., and we end up passing all the teams, and we finished around um, 8.30 a.m. So I think, I think by the last you know, a couple hours where it's just us out on the court, uh, out on the late stages of the course. Yeah. And, then, and this race in particular, there seems to be kind of a team dynamic. Is that part of what you like about it? Yeah, definitely. And I think it appeals to, you know, just the um, everyday runner because you, you have the opportunity to be part of a team out there. And um, for me, it's a, you know, it's something where I'm not doing just an, I want to have, you know, success on my individual run, but it's pretty cool to be um, having my efforts work towards a cumulative team effort. And I think it's totally unique to be, you know, you know I had told you this story earlier, but to be in the, the middle of nowhere, back roads, North Carolina at 3 a.m. and you're running all out up a mountain. And it seems like there's no question about why you're doing it because there's 11 sweaty dudes in a van, you know, driving by you, blasting Metallica or something and cheering your name. So um, it's super motivating and it's it's just a cool, fun experience for sure. And uh, so the Asheville Running Collective, uh, tell me about your role in that. And I, I understand that kind of start originated as, you know, for this actual event. Yeah, that's true. Um, all praise goes to Captain Frankie Atkins, and uh, he started the team. He was one of the main guys behind it. And um, about seven years ago, he wanted to get all the competitive runners in Asheville and kind of the Western North Carolina area together to try to really um, do well at the Blue Ridge Relay. So it started as a relay team, and then from there, about five or six years ago, we kind of broke it off into, or I guess evolved it, into a year-round team and we try to find a few other races throughout the year we can have that team element but we've also grown it so that we can our goal is to support um, those runners coming out of college or you know the post-collegiate scene who might be wanting to still run fast on the track or long trail races or marathons or 5ks and give them a team with which they can train some support um, so it's been really cool to see how it's grown, but we always go back to our roots with the, the relay. I understand you guys have a local John as a hangout. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, every Thursday we do a Thursday night wedge run, and uh, the wedge building is a building full of galleries and, importantly, the wedge brewery in, uh, that's in the River Arts District of Asheville. Um, that was started probably, I guess, a little over five years ago, and we have awesome trail running and um, soft surface running in Asheville, and that's where we spend most of our time. But one of the guys in the in the scene said we need to have you know one run a week where we go run fast and flat. So it was also a perk to be able to finish where there's delicious beverages. And um, so we, yeah, we started that run and we run out and back from the brewery, and uh, it's probably I think we I think we were telling it we've done like. 270 runs or something we only miss one or two a year so that's been a fun tradition too well i i did the uh, rooster's revenge uh, aaron staff's race uh today and i was asking around about the Asheville running collective and uh what do you think the most common refrain is when i ask around about how do they describe it oh man <laughs> i don't know i i would imagine uh, only positive things, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, say, they say that's where all the really fast guys go. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, the wedge run has had a reputation of being a fast run, and we hope it's not unwelcoming in that way, but um, we also do want it to be a place where if someone's training for a marathon or 5K or the shut-in trail race and they want to come and get a faster run or push themselves, they can, you know, let it rip. And um, you've got some familiarity with uh, with Colorado, the Rocky Mountain Runners. I don't know if you've come yeah, across them. Yeah, 
But they have a similar thing where, you know, they got former collegiate runners, so they get to be known as the fast folks, um, which can present some, you know, challenges for branding when you're trying to be That's inclusive. True. You want to yeah, be fast. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyway, well, tell me, uh, this is our all Asheville kind of blowout show. We did a sit down with Aaron um, and Adam Hill and some others. Uh, we've got some coverage from the Roosters Revenge. Um, tell me about Asheville, how you got here, you know, what it's like. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm from New England, and my wife is from New England as well. So I'm from Massachusetts. She's from New Hampshire. After college uh, at Quinnipiac University in Connecticut, we bounced around a little bit. We lived in Michigan. We spent some time in Boulder and some other areas, and we were looking for somewhere new. So we kind of, in a cliche way, I think, were considering, oh, where could we go? We could go to Boulder, Flagstaff, Portland. And Asheville was one of the places on the list. And I didn't know much about it at all. Um, she had been, uh, she, my wife had previously worked at Zap Fitness, which is a, it's a kind of like a professional running, but also cool, like adult running camp in the mountains of North Carolina. It's in Boone. So she had had some experience here and we had some friends down here. And we came and stayed with Randy Ashley, who's, um, and his wife, Amanda Chase. He's another um, name in the running scene around here. He's been around here for a while. And yeah, we had a great time. They showed us around, um, saw how welcoming it was, saw how, saw how great the trail environment was. It's a cool, it almost has that college town feel without having like the University of Michigan or something right in the center of it. Um, so we love the restaurants and coffee shops and breweries and it just seemed like a really good fit. So yeah, been here about 10 years. Any uh, any negatives? I mean, it's, it's easy to kind of get all romantic about uh, different places, but we, we they all have their drawbacks. And any drawbacks for you? Ooh, uh, or any things you'd, you'd like to improve? Any things I'd like to improve um, in, in terms of like running Asheville. or life? No, just oh, Asheville. just Asheville. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, I I, whew, I have to say, you know, I, I something that is becoming more of a problem is uh, here it comes folks. You're gonna say traffic. Oh my God, I actually was going to say traffic, yeah. The other thing I was going to say is housing prices are getting a little insane. I don't want to complain too much because I own my house. So I, I think I'd do really well if I sold my house. I just couldn't buy another one. Right. Yeah. We, uh, that's a very common uh, problem out in Colorado where we're at. So uh, we, should, we should also finish by maybe giving a little kudos to the rest of your team. You want to just uh, tell us who, who else was on your team? Okay. You, well, you, well, you, no, no, I, I, I could. It's just I've been up for. Oh I yeah. Was, <laughs> I can do it. I can All do right, it. you got it. You got it. Eleven other names. This man's been up for thir How many hours were you up? Well, I did. I did get some sleep last yeah, night. But thirty hours, you but, said, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it was. I think it was. So we're gonna give hours. you a pass if you miss somebody. All right. All right. All right so it. we had um, on our leadoff, we had Phil Ladder, and then he handed off to Caleb Masland, and then he handed off to Will uh, Norris. And Will was one of our stud runners, and I'll, I'll shout out. He did 10, this is, this is a little peek into the Blue Ridge Relay. So he did a 10-mile leg that gained 1,000 feet, and he ran 540 pace. So he's, he's pretty How's that even possible? <laughs> he's a stud. So um, then he handed off to myself, and then I handed off to uh, Matt Hammersmith. And uh, Hammer handed off to... Frankie Atkins, our captain. And then uh, that's the first van. I think that was six, I hope. Yep. And then uh, Javen Lapp. And then he handed off to, this is the part where I would start it's getting delirious because <laughs> I had just finished my run. Um, I know Shiloh Melky was in the mix. And then let's see, I'll just start naming people. Yep. Duncan, um, let's see, Duncan. Then we had Mike and uh, Mike Z. And then we had... Alex Griggs, and we had, uh, oh, I'm missing someone. I'm so sorry. Who's it going to be? Oh, Chaz Armstrong. Boom. I think that was 12. That was well done, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for playing. Mark, we look forward to uh, getting back in Asheville. Uh, anything that you want people to know, like maybe they're planning a visit to Asheville, maybe they're in the Asheville area and looking for cool races or, you know, things to do, just, you know. Yeah. Any, any inner, in, uh, beta, any uh, Asheville beta for us? Well, I would say, um, as with any town that has a big uh, tourist element, which we, we have, uh, you know, awesome sites for all, um, anyone visiting, you've got to talk to someone local, so then you can at least give them the, you know, give them that opportunity to tell them all the things 
that they love. So I would say, um, if you're into running, go to Just Running in North Asheville or Footer X in South Asheville, ask those guys. Um, if you're into beer, hit Burial in South Slope or Wedge Brewing. Talk to someone at the bar, ask them, where do you guys go? That's how you'll get your restaurants, your drinks, your coffee shops. Um, yeah, you gotta go to the local stores and the local businesses and ask what they would do. So that's my recommendation. And the uh, wedge run is on Thursday nights? Thursday nights at 6.15 p.m. Yeah. All right, and then how do people look up Asheville Running Collective? Yeah, AshevilleRunningCollective.com is the website. We're on, easy. yeah, we're on Facebook, Instagram, those things are updated um, in spurts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can follow our uh, many adventures on there. Hey, we're going to let you get some sleep now. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
but it's such a fun thing to be a part of. You know, they're super welcoming and they're just a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I also came across the fastest grandparent on the course. You got time for a quick interview for an outdoor podcast? Sure. All right, who am I running with? Tag Garmin. Tag Garmin, tell me about yourself. Well, let's see, I'm a grandfather. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. Uh, I live in um, Asheville. Been in Hendersonville for since 85. I mountain bike and run out here all the time. I love this place. Love Foot RX. And excited. It's going to be a good day. Awesome. What are we thinking about these stream crossings? Uh, refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. All right. <laughs> Just a couple miles in, we came to the first of a seemingly unending series of stream crossings. See if you can walk on water. <laughs> That's where I caught up with John Mazarek, an Asheville resident. Here we go. And just like that, <laughs> there's a lot of mushroom hunting too. These things are like honey mushrooms. Mushroom hunting, huh? They're all edible. Nice. All these little brown ones everywhere. Hallucinogenic? No, it's just an uh, okay meal. An okay meal? <laughs> if you're in a pinch? It's not, well, no, it's pretty good. It's just not like, you know, super ridiculous. You gotta waste the whole day picking these things. Uh huh. So if cool. you run into them, you know. So you just go on a trail run mushrooms. and. You pick mushrooms along the way? Uh, just eye out some spots and then come back and, huh, you know. What are, uh, what are you looking out for? What have you already spotted? Uh, chicken in the woods, oysters, those honey mushrooms. Uh, um, a lot of odd ones too that you just find a few of, but chicken in the woods is the main one. There were 10 creek crossings in a one mile stretch at the beginning of the race and a few bonus ones later on, just enough to ensure that the feet never fully got dry. After a relentless hill climb up a gravel road, we reached the top of the course where we could see the Blue Ridge Parkway and then started a very steep descent to the finish. Asheville resident Sophie Beckham and I helped keep each other motivated and finished within a few minutes of each other. I actually grew up in this part of the state and um, was away for a long time and moved back about seven years ago. Yeah, and uh, we were running together most of the time. You're a qu quite a fast 42-year-old. Thank you. <laughs> and, and you won number one female. I guess so. <laughs> I'm thrilled if I did. That would be a huge, unexpected perk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to be out here. Yeah, tell me a little yeah. bit about what we saw out there. A lot of fast downhills. You're an extremely fast downhiller. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know how he just lets his legs go <laughs> like that. So something, something to learn. <laughs> yeah, and you were chugging along like uh, the engine that could on the uphills. Yeah, I'm more the mountain goat style. So. <laughs> yeah, cool. And so do you? how did you learn about this race? Actually, um, I haven't raced in a while, and I saw this was coming up. I've never run in the Mills River area, but I've run tons of trails. I usually just run on trails around here, so I just really wanted to explore some new trails. Yeah, yeah awesome. And yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned Rim to Rim to Rim is on the bucket list? Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. What's holding so. you back? Oh, i got to find a few people to go with me. Okay. Not everyone has such a smooth race. Here's Kendra Connolly, a 30-year-old resident of Black Mountain, who took up trail running about a year ago when she moved east from Laramie, Wyoming. And you had a little bit of adventure out there. <laughs> I got stung by a bee, and then I threw up, and then I fell, but it was good. I finished. It was fine. It was, and look, it was all part of the journey. All in all, this was a fun, scenic, and well-run event that is sure to stick around as an Asheville classic. Ann Wheatley, who you heard about at the top of the show, has already put Sophie on notice that she wants the beautiful ceramic rooster that Aaron gives away to the winners. Thanks to everyone in Asheville who hosted us during our visit there. We look forward to getting back in early December to record some more and experience winter trail running in the Smokies. Be sure to check out our show notes for links to everything we discussed on our Asheville show spectacular. Write to us at info at dispatchradio.com. Connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to the pod on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. And we get the uh, impressionable slash inebriated guy on each team to start really start talking a lot of trash. And then <laughs> wait, who, who is that on your team? <laughs> <laughs> got Alex Griggs. Alex, yeah. all right. And, um, oh, and then you turn it into a beer mile? Not necessarily a beer. There's, it's beer-fueled, but we, uh, 
we go find there's an alley downtown and we they yesterday we did a relay race actually because two other people were stupid enough to sign up <laughs> so they have to sprint down this back alley touch a fence come back just in their street clothes whatever <laughs> so yeah, leg 37 is part of the it's in the mix as well who won leg 37 yesterday oh sadly we had a baton mishap uh oh and <laughs> we were not the victors. Oh no! So you don't get the total taste of victory then. No, huh? no. Well, everyone who did it was a, ended up being a loser this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The one guy was like, I might have felt okay, and then I did that. Now I'm, I'm sure to feel horrible.